Happy hunting, man. Jeez. Some good stuff we'll be reviewing along the way. According to this thing here, Dan, uh, we only need five bottles. Five? Yeah. Only five? Once again, it's Whiskey Wednesday. I'm Dan. And I'm Eddie. We're the Deathless Dogs. Today we've got a little bit of a different kind of video for you. Uh, it's our first like list video we've ever done. And this is kind of a popular thing going on right now on Reddit, uh, Facebook, YouTube. A lot of people are doing this. And it's this principle that somebody put up on Reddit saying, you really only need five bottles. We're overachieving. But really, you only need five. And that's not to say, like, you only ever need to have five bottles of whiskey in your entire lifetime. Right. It's saying you only really need to have five at a time. It's kind of an interesting thing. A lot of people have been giving their lists, and we figured we'd jump in and give our take on it as well so you might get a total of 10 whiskeys here today yeah i don't think we have any crossover the five bottles that you need in your collection you start with your daily drinker then you've got your cheap mixer then you've got your like impress your guest bottle right then you have a uh, like your own special it's Friday night. Friday night lights. Kinda, yeah. What's going to get you there? And then your special occasion. Razzle dazzle. Yeah. Let's jump into it because these glasses are empty and I feel like a good thing to fill them with would be our daily drinker. Daily drinkers, line them up. Let's go. So my daily drinker that I selected is Eagle Rare. This one here just happens to be a single barrel store pick, but as you can see behind me, I think we were about two deep in the Eagle Rare department. As am I like three deep at my own house. I drink it quite often and it's a pretty easy no-brainer daily drinker for me. And also, as a musician, I might add that the neck on these bottles makes for a great bottle slide. And I think it's featured on one of our tracks, actually. The slide guitar on Bring It In. Daily drinker. Put it on your side. My bad. I didn't know what we're doing. All right. <laughs> that's, your, that's your side. This is my side. All that's right. your side. I will put my bottles on my side. Daily drinker. Yeah, so that's a good pick. Because uh, the idea behind a daily drinker would be that it's not super expensive. Relatively easy to find. Eagle Rare can be difficult to find. But when it's here, it's abundant. And we can pick up a bunch of it at one time like I'm sure you did mine is a little more easy to find than his and it is wild turkey rare breed I like wild turkey stuff right. and this is barrel proof it's not a super high barrel proof though only 116.8 but you're getting a little burn off of it runs in the mid 30s around here I've seen in other places it goes around 40 bucks I still don't think that's outrageous for a uh, daily drinker really solid bottle you could also go with like a turkey 101 uh, that's going to be about 15 bucks less and even more, you know even more of a value pickup at that point i think you'd be pretty satisfied having a, a glass of rare breed every night absolutely and i'm gonna try try out that theory right now <laughs> <laughs> okay i suppose we should go for our second bottles here cheap mixer so i'll go first on this one my idea of a cheap mixer should be obviously cheap but it's still gonna come through in mixed cocktails the flavor of it it's not going to completely disappear i want it to have a little bit of proof in that regard so my pick on that old granddad 114. nice it's good in like an old fashioned. Uh, you could mix it with anything. It's gonna have above 100 proof, so it's gonna come through. Yeah. Um, you're still gonna feel it. My value mixer beverage, What what is it officially called? Cheap mixer? We'll call it cheap mix, but if you wanna go value mixer beverage. I like that. It rolls mean, off the tongue in a weird way that it doesn't roll. <laughs> 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 call Jameson the tumbling dice. I have segwayed away from bourbon for my cheap mixer which is a surprise but jameson is kind of like a traditional mixer as is it traditional jameson here that i share shots with uh justin or of the worst on quite a bit you know jameson tastes great 
straight. You can shoot it. You can sip it. You can mix it with ginger ale. It's fantastic. Uh, you can even put Coke in it, and it's fine. Reminds me again of college. Jameson, the official whiskey of college. Yeah, I think so. As you're saying, uh, you know, how you can drink it so many different ways, I think that can also be the cheap mixer one should also be able to just be a shot, too. Yeah. I feel like. And these are yeah. both good shots. Absolutely. Yeah, I think for... everyone knows what Jameson tastes like. Like, yeah. you don't have to even say it because it's understood. Plus, it's very traditional. Like, I like the green label. I like that this one comes in a tin. Like, I don't think that's a common tradition. No. But... but... That suggests to me that that thing's probably about a year old Christmas here, here season. Here we go. Here, everyone knows what this is. Yeah. I guess we'll put it that way. There's there's some Jameson right there. We recognize that. So, you know, I'm, it is what it is. Yeah. I guess I also want to give an honorable mention. Like, since I strayed from the path of bourbon, and I am kind of a bourbon person, um, honorable mention to Four Roses Yellow Label. Number three is... A bottle to impress your guests and now this could go a few different ways you could be saying like I'm gonna pull out something that's a little bit hard to find and they're gonna get the ooh you know or it could be something that you just think is very good and you want to share with your guests and if they haven't had it they're gonna be impressed by the flavor of it if they have had it they're gonna be happy to see you pull out a bottle of it so it doesn't necessarily have to be something super expensive or anything like that. I think this is the most like subjective of it because this could change based on who you're with too. We're going to have a hard time impressing each other because we just drink together all I the time. I don't like I'll send Dan a picture of like something that I'm just excited to get like in a message and he'll just reply with a thumbs up and I'm like <laughs> what the fuck man. <laughs> like, like, whenever you send me a picture, like, hey, I found this Blanton's, I'm always like, nice! <laughs> I well, because like I, a... send, I send you the Blanton's because I know you're going to freak out about Blanton's. Yeah. You want to go first on this one? I still, I can't remember your two, like, segments of what it takes, what, what the subjective matter is for the bottle, but I'm going to throw in a third one. I will regale you with an epic tale, an epic voyage on how this bottle came to be. Okay, so we got Maker's Mark Private Select. Now, I know that this is abundant. I know you see this in a lot of grocery stores for like a $70 price point. This one, this particularly dusty Maker's Private Select was obtained two years ago from the Maker's Mark Distillery in Loretto, Kentucky. Tanya hand dipped this bottle mm. into the waxer. The other thing that I'm really impressed with by this, if I were to break it out for somebody, you can see on the back the oak staves they use that go into this particular batch of Maker's Private Select. A lot of the times you aren't going to get past three certain staves. Mm -hmm. But this particular bottle, it has five oak staves of seared French cuvee, three roasted French mocha staves, one toasted French spice stave, and one baked American puree stave. So they really loaded up the barrel on that one. Yeah. And it has a very creamy, very vanilla, very almost like cafe style taste to it. And if you got like a real stave head coming over. Yeah, if you somebody can hit them with the like stave facts yeah if you got a stave hipster in your in your house you can be like oh yeah well uh check my staves <laughs> yeah check my staves all right so for my impress your guests i'm gonna go with an old favorite old forester 1910 really this could be 1910 or 20 i just have a nice full bottle of 1910 here this is one for somebody that's coming over maybe he's trying to get into bourbon a little bit and they probably haven't had this one yet uh, I think they would drink it and want to get it and then see the price point on it and be like, wow, that's not even that expensive. That's a lot of flavor for like in the $50 range. Right. If you're somebody who is into bourbon, you, you're you going to know this bottle and chances are you're going to like it. And if you don't, you can, the door's right there. <laughs> you can get out. You can, you can go. I think it's just a really solid bottle. The 1920 as well. Both very drinkable, very flavorful bottles. And I think if someone came through that doors who was a bit more of a a whiskey snob, we, we would have something waiting for you. But if you're going to come in here and snob out, you, you, you can snob outside. <laughs> you can snob on out. <laughs> All right, number four is your 
we'll call it Friday night drinker. You're not your daily drinker. You want to step it up a little bit. It's Friday night. It's the night. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It's, could be Saturday night. You know what I mean. Let loose. You don't have to work the next day. You've earned it. That's one of the best drinks of the week, really. Oh, absolutely. As I mentioned in my birthday video, when it is that Friday night drink, I want something higher proof. And uh, nothing says high proof quite like a Booker's. Really any Booker's. I like Booker's a lot. I know it's kind of controversial right now because of the price increase. We didn't really live through the price increase, though. So it's not like this jarring thing of like, holy shit, this is way more expensive than it used to be. That being said, you can also find places that haven't adjusted their prices. Also has a bit of controversy just on flavor. Some people just aren't fans of it. I am, though. They go for flavor. They go for a heavy-hitting aspect where it's going to get you there. Mm -hmm. And they also go for presentation. They come with a nice wood box and the little yeah. slidey thing. and It's sitting on one right now. Makes me wonder, though, if they went away from the wax. If they went away from the wood box, do you think they could ask for less? Do you think it would sell as well? Do you think it would be... I don't think they could command the same price point they do. I know I've ragged on other bottles for being flashy bottles and therefore costing more money. But this one feels like more... In a scotch type direction, where like scotch is always coming in a tube. It's always, you know, there's always an extra thing. I think that's kind of what the Booker's thing is. Plus, like, you just look down an aisle and see it on a shelf. Like, oh, there's a big brown wood box. My Friday night pick should come as no surprise to anyone. I am a Blanton's guy through and through. I love the image, I love the bottle, and I really enjoy the whiskey itself. I don't think I really need to say anything else about it. Blanton's. This is actually a bottle that I picked up in Madison over the weekend because I saw it sitting on a shelf, so I picked it up. So Dan missed my like celebration touchdown end zone dance because it was happening because that's how much I like finding Blanton's. Dan okay. finds Blanton's, I basically find Blanton's. I'm not a big Blanton's fan, but if I find it at retail, I'll just buy it because I know like at least I could sell it to him or something. I'm also going to do a report. Probably not a bad idea. I really like this Eagle Rare that I'm drinking, though. Like, I know you didn't really like it as Wasn't much. Wasn't a huge I, fan of that store pick. I really do like it. I think it's fantastic. I think we're just killing this. You can get out. Our table is not level. It'll just have to happen on the table. Bye. Goodbye. I'm going to let you re-up and kind of explain the concept of the last bottle here. Bottle 5 is your special occasion whiskey. You're kind of saving it. Might be something that's a little hard to find something a little higher priced that you're not trying to rip through a bottle no. very fast. This shouldn't come as a shocker to anybody, but uh, Blanton's Gold with the UK sticker because this is before apparently you can get it in the US now. Well, so, apparently you can get it in the US. I don't know if I've never seen it. Good luck. really getting it in the US. Good luck finding it, but I'm hitting you with that razzle dazzle. This is also a fresh bottle. Who knows? That's the S. That's the finish line too. Finish line. Same story as I told back in the first review. You can rewatch the tape. Obviously, you drank one because we re have reviewed it, but yep. you're saving the second one. Saving the second one, I don't know for what. You know, I don't know when I'm going to break it open, but uh, this is a bottle that I will cherish for a while, I'm sure. My special occasion is one I just got over the weekend, and that's a Wild Turkey Master's Keep. This is one that I specifically wanted on my bourbon hunt over the last week. And this one is actually batch one. Oh, uh, nice. The very first one. And the guy at the liquor store, like I came in, I saw it, and I was like, which one's this? He goes, that's the very first one. And it's because they got like three cases of it, and it got buried in the basement. And like the salesman forgot about it. Like the guy selling it to me was like audibly pissed off about it he's like oh yeah this would have been gone years ago if the guy did his damn job wow so like, that, i didn't know that that's really cool i'm thinking a possibility of a fresh bottle pop thanksgiving turkey dinner nice you know yes. what i'm saying with with all of you we'll review the master's keep for thanksgiving i think it is kind of a full circle bottle as my daily drinker is wild turkey rare breed yeah those are our five of the you only need five bottles list i don't necessarily know if i agree with that concept but it's fun what would be your five bottles we'll post the categories here and then yeah uh fill them in with what you would pick as your five bottles be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already from the western wisconsin whiskey emporium for ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next week cheers <laughs>
You want my sandwich, don't you? <laughs>